Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Town Center. This was sent to me by Luda Creations, and is designed by Alban Viard. Town Center is a game where players, as newly minted mayors, try to build and grow their town by increasing its population and its value. To do that, they have to compete with other towns to attract developers who will make investments in residential, commercial, retail, and infrastructure, infrastructure projects, and there's only so many of them to go around. Let me show you how to play. So in Town Center, you are all trying to um, create the town with the highest population and the most cash reserves at the end of the game. In the first phase, we have investment, where a player draws a number of cubes from this bag equal to twice the number of players. In a four-player game, that would be eight. And then they have to make a number of towers as the same number of players, each tower consisting of two cubes. So it'd have to be something like Maybe this, 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 and this. Then, starting with the first player, proceeding in clockwise order, each player must take the topmost cube from one of the stacks. You each take turns doing that. You could also take one from the one at the bottom because they're technically the top cube. Then, in reverse player order, you do the same for the rest. So, something like this, 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 and this. Each player drafts their cubes that way. Then in the construction phase, you have to build the cubes you got. This purple cube you start with at the beginning of the game, it counts the same as an office cube, which we'll get into later. Now there are building regulations. These green cubes are residential cubes and they cannot be placed in a position adjacent to another residential cube during this phase. So what, what adjacent means is if it's orthogonally adjacent, or if it's directly on top or below. So I couldn't put one here in the construction phase, I couldn't put one here in the construction phase. The same rule applies to blue cubes, which are commercial buildings. They also cannot um, touch any other commercial cubes in the construction phase. Now each turn, each player would only build two cubes, but I'm gonna show you some of the other cubes. Office buildings, if you wanna build these, uh, you need to uh, pay incentives. So when you play an office cube, you must spend $5. Your money track is here. Each player starts out with three, so you wouldn't be able to do it yet. But let's say theoretically I spent $5, I would move my cube and I could place an office building. If you can't um, buy an office cube because you can't afford it, you have to throw it away. These black cubes are elevator and parking cubes. Um, if it is just on the ground floor like this, it is a parking cube. Parking cubes will earn you income in a, a later phase. If there are more than one black cubes on top of each other, now it is a elevator. Elevator lets you determine the highest level you can build. Um, obviously the elevator itself excluded. So if I have a two story elevator, now I can start building cubes on top of other cubes. However, an elevator is only functional if it's adjacent to a yellow utilities cube, which these are for power. So if I have something like this, now this elevator is functioning. Towers can only be built in the building sites of the center. You may never build uh, towers in the suburbs on the outside. And a tower can only build up to five cubes max. So this would be the tallest elevator I could have. Once everyone has built their cubes, then it's time for development. During development, the green residential cubes and the blue commercial cubes can grow. Now, development occurs by taking cubes from the reserve and placing them adjacent to existing cubes. It is not necessary for the green or blue cubes to be connected to a yellow utilities cube to develop. For a green residential cube, in order to develop, it needs to be adjacent to a number of office cubes that is at least one higher than the number of cubes that make up the unit. So for an, a, a, unit, a cube of one, I would need to have two offices next to it. And if that's the case, then I can build adjacent to this. In this case, I would have to build up. If I have a residential unit of two cubes like this, then it needs to be adjacent to three office cubes to develop and so on. So it's always one more. So if I had, let's say this, then this green cube could also grow and it could go maybe this way, or it could go continuing up, or it could go that way actually. Either way, it's gonna develop further. Also, residential units can be merged into one larger unit. If I had like, let's say one here, 
theoretically, uh, and I b connected them here, they form into one residential unit. Of course, the only way this would have happened is if there were the appropriate number of office cubes next to it, which in this case, it would then grow. The commercial buildings, the blue cubes are a little bit different. They are that to be adjacent to a number of units, not cubes. So for let's say this blue cube here, this would need to be adjacent to two different green units. So this only counts as one unit, but if I had two of them here, then the blue one can also grow during the development phase. And now that it has two cubes in the unit, that means it needs to be adjacent to three units because there's two cubes. So in summary, the red and purple office cubes stimulate the de development of green units. Green units stimulate the development of blue units. Now, obviously this would all happen like over several turns, each turn you're only doing you know two blocks at a time for tax revenue after cities develop then you check your blue units and see if they are powered in this case they wouldn't be but if i put a yellow cube here they're powered the way to uh, count how much income you get is it's a little complicated one cube generates one dollar but each cube connected to it generates plus one more so this would be one two three dollars and if the height is higher like this then you also account for the height it's very complicated so let's say i have a unit that's four cubes total uh that would be one plus two plus three plus four which is ten then i check the height of it which the highest cube is two so it goes up one so it's eleven there's a whole chart here to tell you how that works. So each player earns income based on their commercial units. They also get uh, money from parking lots. So for a parking lot, you count how many are adjacent to it orthogonally. In this case, it would generate $2. And then the town generates $1 for itself, uh, just in general. Count up all that income. In this case, it would be 11 plus 2 plus 1, so 14, and you would move up in income. Then the public works phase allows players in reverse player order, if they want, to buy a yellow utilities cube or a black parking cube or elevator cube from the reserve. If it's the first one in your town, it costs $5. If it's the second, it costs 10, uh, third, 15, and so on. And the same thing for um, black cubes. Once everyone's had the opportunity to do that, you then pass the cubes to the next player, they draw cubes, make them in the towers, and drop them again. Now you keep doing this until all the cubes in the bag are gone at the end of the 10th round. Then, at the end, you will get one point for every $5 left in your income, points for residential units that are powered. So uh, it's the same scoring thing, like if I have, oh my God. If I have this unit here, which is one, two, three, four, five uh, cubes, um, and it's the height is three, you would look at the chart here. So it's five, so that'd be 18 points, but they have to be powered in order for that to count. You also get minus one for building in the suburbs, uh, minus one for each of these that are filled in. And that's it. You count up your points from your houses at the end, get extra points for the money, uh, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise you are building cubes based on the rules. Some of them grow on their own, depending if their development requirements are set and you just try to build this city up and that's the game. So considering this game is just a bunch of blocks, the rules are too damn fiddly. Like I can see a version of this in my mind's eye. That is fun, but the fiddliness of the rules makes it more annoying than it should be to play. Now, the drafting of the cubes is fine. You know, I actually kind of wish there were more cubes to work with because later on, construction can be really annoying if you're just unlucky and don't draw certain cubes for a long period. For example, office cubes are required for the green cubes, but because there's less red cubes, it can be very possible you just don't draw them uh, and you're just forced to 
deal with these sprawling green things that, you know, you're just building in the suburbs even if you don't want to. I don't like that it's so based on, oh, well, I hope you draw the right stuff. Um, it seems a little limiting in that way. You know, construction isn't too bad, although, again, like I just mentioned, if you're unlucky, certain cubes can be really annoying to place. Green cubes can't touch green cubes, blue cubes can't touch blue ones, red ones, you gotta pay money, so if you draw those red cubes in the beginning and nobody has the money yet, you just have to throw them away and there's only a certain number of them. If you don't draw black cubes, you can't build higher, uh, so you have to build outward. You know, with a bad draw of cubes, there's less and less choices and more forced annoyances. And then the development is where the rules get really annoying. Like, the green cubes can only develop if they're adjacent to a number of office cubes, at least one higher. But the blue cubes can only develop not if they're adjacent to a number of cubes, but a number of units. Which, that is, the number of units has to be at least one higher than the number of cubes. Instead of the number of cubes being higher, like, why do it this way? It is so not intuitive. <laughs> Like, sure, maybe thematically it makes more sense, or whatever, it, but it's just such a drag. Like, the fact that you have to have a whole chart for that, also for the revenue. Like, counting up the revenue, you gotta have that chart. Oh, but parking lots are adjacency, and you get one dollar for existing, so don't forget that. A lot of little easy things to forget, and sometimes these, these units just sprawl in weird ways, so you're, like, looking like, oh, how many cubes are in here? Okay, and the height is, oh, and then... I knock over the cubes, it's... It's a lot. Deducting points for suburbs at the end can again feel pretty irritating if you were just forced to do so because of bad cube draws in the beginning. Overall, I think this game is very fiddly. It's got some unintuitive rules that are almost guaranteed to trip you up at some point. I think a simpler version of this game could have actually been pretty fun. But this one is a little too overloaded, a little too fiddly for its own good.